Yo, we are in Venice. So we arrived in Venice from Milan using the Freccia Rossa train and it took about two hours from Milan to get to Venice. And the way that we got from Venice to our Airbnb was using the Vaporetto. Uh, we're actually staying on an Airbnb uh, on the Giudecca Island. And uh, so it takes about 20 minutes from the train station to get to Giudecca. Giudecca is basically the island where a lot of the locals live. And so it's a very interesting place to stay in Venice because you get the view of the main island, including the San Marco uh, Square and the Duomo and that kind of stuff from Giudecca. And it's a lot more peaceful on Giudecca, as you can see. One of the things that surprised us when we first arrived in Venice is just how big it is. It's actually a lot bigger than we were expecting from seeing a lot of the YouTube videos. Initially, we were only planning to spend about two nights in Venice, but we changed our plans and decided to stay three nights. And now we are very glad that we decided to stay longer in Venice because like I said, it's a lot bigger than we were expecting. I mean, right now we're walking around Giudecca and it's just a beautiful place to walk around sunset or actually any time of the day, to be honest. Um, so we are gonna be making our way around the island and um, tomorrow we're gonna be going onto the main island and walking to the main attractions. Venice is such an interesting place to visit just because of the way that you have to get around the city mostly by boat and just being able to access the water this easily and seeing the water all over the place is a very intriguing and different experience versus any other city that we've visited. If you've missed our other Europe city videos we are visiting on August 16th so this is pretty much around the time that a lot of the Italians are going on their Ferragosto vacations. So we were thinking that a lot of the restaurants and that kind of stuff would be closed in Venice, but actually most of the restaurants that we've passed so far on Giudecca are open. So we're glad that we might have some choices for dinner and food throughout the day. One of the special considerations for Venice if you're visiting in August or in the summertime is that there's a lot of mosquitoes so if you're allergic to mosquitoes or you really hate mosquitoes uh, you should probably use a lot of mosquito repellent when you're visiting Venice in the summertime so so far based on our very first impressions of Venice we feel like Venice is probably the best city that we've visited so far in Europe in terms of the overall beauty and the experience that we're getting here in Venice so uh, it's definitely one of those cities where you know it's on everybody's bucket list to visit and I we really feel like uh, our expectations have been surpassed in terms of the beauty and the overall experience that we're having here in Venice just the way that you go from the train to the Vaporetto or the water bus uh, the water bus itself is an experience that you don't really get anywhere else so um, it's just great here if you are the type of person who enjoys walking around cities and just strolling around without any particular destination Venice is a great place to do that it, the streets here are very wide very comfortable and on Giudecca it's very clean there's no weird smells so it's a very comfortable place to walk around look at the water and look at all the different interesting sights that you get to see as you're walking around. Well, bona sera, we finished a whole day on the main island in Venice and now we are back on Giudecca, which is where our Airbnb is. So the main island is definitely more commercialized and more populated with tourists than on Giudecca, but uh, the main island is still very beautiful. Um, there's plenty of spots that you can go on the main island that aren't as touristy and aren't as crowded with people. So there's always that opportunity 
on the main island to walk around and explore all the different neighborhoods. We went to Cana Reggio um, and also the main parts like the uh, St. Mark's Square and we also visited the Doge's Palace today. So all of the attractions were pretty good. The Doge's Palace was very uh, a very like extensive uh, attraction with many rooms and you get to walk through the bridge of size. So the tickets are kind of expensive at around 31 euros per person in 2023 but uh, you know it's one of the main attractions in Venice so you probably have to go and buy your tickets in advance to make sure that you can get a spot at a time that you want. So overall our experience in Venice so far is still amazing. We really enjoy it here especially on Giudecca which is where our Airbnb is. Giudecca is just so much more peaceful and it still gives you the Venice experience even though it's not as touristy and there's not like main attractions on Giudecca but uh, Giudecca every time we go back to Giudecca we feel like uh, relaxed and we feel like we are home and so um, we had a dinner in Giudecca and also we had uh, a lunch in the main island on Venice and so we enjoyed the lunch that we had on Venice more we think that the ingredients that they used on the main island were higher quality than the ones that they used uh, today for dinner on Giudecca and because uh, Giudecca in general is kind of hard to find good produce and good ingredients on Giudecca we went into one of the supermarkets or those mini markets on Giudecca and we found the selection was not as good as we found um, on the main island so on the main island you have more ingredients you have fresher ingredients so on Giudecca you can't really expect to get really good cuisine uh, compared to the main island. So uh, once again overall we just spent a whole day, a whole another day in Venice and tomorrow we have our last full day in Venice. We're gonna be still walking around on the main island. Um, you know Venice is a place that I don't think it's very useful to just have a list of things to do. I think Venice is a place where you just walk around and just explore and just eat and um, sit around and admire the beauty, admire the interesting lifestyles that are on Venice. So it's not really a place where you just have a whole list of things to do and just go out and do it the whole day. So uh, I would recommend or we would recommend just kind of relaxing in Venice, walking around doing whatever you feel like doing because pretty much the only activities you have on Venice are walking around, eating, and riding a boat, riding the water bus, and that kind of thing. So tomorrow we're probably going to be doing a lot of the same, but we still very much enjoy it. We also did the typical gondola ride from Rialto Bridge in the morning. We got there at around 9 a.m., which is when the gondola rides open. So our ride was the one that costs 100 euros, which is the ones that go through the narrow canals. So you have the option of 80 euros for going on the Grand Canal or 100 euros to go on the narrow canal. So we initially chose the Grand Canal, but we changed our mind and chose the narrow canals. And we don't regret our choice. I think the narrow canal ride is definitely the better feeling romantic kind of gondola ride that you are uh, used to when you think of the Venice gondola ride so definitely choose the narrow canals if you have a chance the gondola rides are spread the starting stations are spread throughout the city you don't have to take the one that originates from Rialto Bridge because those ones have really large stations but uh, the other ones that are spread throughout the city are kind of like smaller little uh, gondola stations and they start off in the narrower canals. And so um, 
We really enjoyed the gondola ride. However, in the early morning at around 9 a.m., you will have to encounter a lot of traffic in the narrow canals because there's people doing deliveries, there's trash people uh, moving trash out of the city and all that stuff. So you're definitely gonna encounter a lot more traffic early in the morning. So maybe if you take a gondola ride near the nighttime, um, around 6 or 7 p.m., you'll probably encounter less traffic. However, I think the rides later in the day or at night cost more in general, so uh, be aware of that. But overall, we really enjoyed our gondola ride and we think obviously it's worth the money even though it's very expensive. Um, so if you do do a gondola ride, um, try to do the narrow canal gondola ride. We are almost finished with our second full day in Venice and our opinion of Venice hasn't changed throughout the last few days. We still think that Venice is a very beautiful place. Everywhere you look, there's a feeling of something historic, something that is visually appealing about Venice that you don't really get anywhere else. So it's definitely a place that we love visiting and it's not really a place that we are considering visiting again. It's not a place where there's a lot of activities or anything like that. It's more like a bucket list kind of destination for us. Um, we've been here, we've walked, you know, like 10 miles a day for the last two or three days. So we have really seen a lot of what Venice has to offer. We've been to St. Um, Mark's Cathedral and also, you know, the Doge's Palace and that kind of stuff. So uh, everything here is definitely uh, very visually appealing. Like I said, uh, the activities here involve mostly eating and walking around. Uh, eating here, the food is not amazing or anything, but it's pretty edible and it's expensive. But, you know, it's Venice, so the food has to get here some way. It's very difficult to get things onto Venice. Everything needs to be transported by boat and by trolley and that kind of thing. So, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a place where you can't really expect the finest cuisines and whatnot. So, uh, so for today, we're just gonna keep walking around and finish off with a dinner on the main island. We were just at Bellagio about four days ago, and in our opinion, uh, Venice, in terms of the overall beauty of it, is better than Bellagio. Obviously, Bellagio is a totally different area with Lake Como and whatnot, but um, in terms of if we had to make a choice between Bellagio or Venice, we would definitely choose Venice over Bellagio because Lake Como is a little bit hazy and Bellagio is such a small area. There's not that much to do in Bellagio in our opinion. We haven't done everything obviously, but uh, when we were there, there seems like it's pretty small. In Venice, you can easily escape all the tourist crowds by going to other parts of the island. For example, right now we are on Castello, uh, the Castello area of Venice, and this place basically has nobody around, so we're just walking around by ourselves. Uh, I personally suffered quite a bit with the mosquito bites. I have maybe six or seven mosquito bites on my leg and a couple mosquito bites on my arms, so it is an issue, but uh, I kind of overreact to mosquito bites so Claire doesn't really have any issues with the mosquitoes so it just really really depends on whether or not you're sensitive to mosquito bites. By the way I know that I've mentioned Judeca before but we once again we really enjoy staying in the Airbnb on Judeca because it's such a peaceful little island that also has a good view of the main island so when you're on Judeca, you kind of get the whole experience of viewing Venice, but you don't have to deal with all of the tourist crowds. Once again, we are spending about three nights here in Venice, but we can imagine spending maybe another one or two nights here because there's still 
some museums and some areas of Venice that we haven't really explored. Even on Judeca, we haven't really walked on the whole island. So um, there's definitely plenty to do in Venice and we're glad that we didn't end up staying only two nights. So yeah, so probably three to four nights would be ideal. We finished our last night in Venice at dinner in Hostario Castello and this restaurant is basically like a fine dining restaurant that we weren't expecting to find in Venice, the main island. So we got their octopus, their suckling pig and their Venetian style liver and all the dishes were fantastic. The octopus was probably one of the best octopus dishes or even the best seafood dishes that we've ever eaten and the suckling pig was definitely probably one of the best pork dishes we've ever eaten as well so we were very pleasantly surprised to find such good food in Venice because all of the other restaurants we went to in Venice were just uh, kind of typical good to great food but nothing that we were surprised about so if you are in the Castello area and are looking for some fine dining type experiences in Venice, uh, try Hostario Castello. We highly recommend this restaurant. They opened about three years ago in 2020, so they're relatively new. And all of the uh, waiters in there were very nice, very helpful, and we thoroughly enjoyed the meal. It was definitely one of the best meals we've had in Europe, which is to say a lot since we've eaten a lot of Michelin star restaurants as well in Europe. So once again, um, this is our last night in Venice. Hope you enjoyed our little impressions of Venice. We very much, we, we really enjoyed Venice and uh, it's a place that is like so special. It's as you're walking around at night and seeing all the boats, seeing all the people riding on the boats, it's, it's a very interesting experience. So definitely one of those places that you have to visit. Thanks for watching.